Okay. So step one in our debugging process, step, uh, step zero was tidy up. Step one is figure out what's going wrong. And this might sound like a super obvious thing to do, but you know, we do sometimes work with students that come to us and say, it's broken, or I'm not getting the points, or something's wrong. Um, and you know, the, the first step to solving a problem is understanding the problem. So if all you know is like you're not getting full credit, that's really not enough for us to start helping you. You do need to have some sense of what is going wrong. And so, so let's see how that typically manifests itself. So, so I'm, I'm using MP0 here. I've got the MP0 test suites up. Um, usually when you're working on the MP, you're gonna be running one test suite at a time. We have instructions in the guides and in the lessons about kind of how to approach things. But I really do suggest that, you know, your typical workflow should be pick a test, usually in the order that we suggest, run that test. And if it, you know, if it fails, it will usually fail when you start because you haven't written the code to solve the problem. Write your code to solve the problem, run the test. If the test succeeds, great. Then run the entire test suite and make sure that you didn't break anything else. Because sometimes when you solve one problem, you create other problems and things that were working before. So that's a good step is to run one test. Once it works, go back run the entire suite. Then if the test isn't working, your goal is to figure out why. What is the test expecting to happen? And why didn't my code do that thing? Um, and so I've created a small problem with my MP0 starter code. Just gonna walk you through the, the process of understanding what's happening. Um, so I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna try this test case. Let's say I was kind of going and I was, uh, and, and if you look here, there's this little green arrow and you can use that, right? You can click on this and you can say run and it will automatically load a run configuration that just runs this one test. Running the entire test suite takes a while, particularly when you run some of the slower tests. So really do zero in on one test, run that test repeatedly while you're developing until you, you have a solution and then move on, right? Don't run the whole test suite every time and don't run the grade task until you're all done because the great task is, is very slow and hides a lot of really useful output. All right, so this test succeeded. Now let's run the next test. So this, this is the next test in the suite. If I was working on MP0, if we hadn't given you some of this code, this is sort of similar to what you would be doing on MP1, right? Pick the first test, run it, um, and, and see what happens. Okay, so this test failed, all right? Um, and so the, the first big clue I have here is this message. And it says, uh, request should have succeeded, value of code, expected 200, but was 404. And then it repeats that. Sorry about that. That's something I couldn't get to go away. There's also a very, very important clue here that we want to use right away, which is that it gives us the line number in the test suite that caused the failure. And it's actually, when you see these links in error messages that are generated by Android Studio, this indicates that this is something I can click on and it will actually take me, boom, right to the line of code that failed. So this is the line of code that failed in the test suite. And this is my starting point for understanding what was supposed to happen. And so, you know, normally when you actually build things for real, you write the test suites and then you write the code. In this particular case, You'll learn how to write test suites later, but we've given you the test suites and your job is to write the code. Sometimes that means that you don't understand as much about what the test suites are doing and that's a problem because in order to fix a problem, you do need to understand what the expected behavior is. What we've tried to do to compensate for this is we've given you test suites that we think are very well commented and explained. Um, and so let's, let's see what's going on here. So, you know, now that you started working on MP1, you're a little bit more about, you know, how get and post requests work to a, a web server. Um, so first of all, there's a comment here that says this test should work. This was a test that was working when we gave you the MP0 starter code. I had to make a change to the code to get it to fail. Um, and then what's the summary? It says test whether the get restaurants server route works properly. So that's an overview of what this test is doing. And then there's a series of steps. So the first thing it does, and you don't have to understand exactly the code that's doing this, but the comment should make some type of sense. So I'm making a certain type of HTTP request. This is called a GET request that retrieves information um, to our API server, which is the source of information about the restaurants that are used in our app. 
and I'm trying to retrieve this restaurant friend. And you'll see that I'm doing some string concatenation here using the server URL. This is a constant that's exposed as part of the top level uh, application object. And then I'm appending restaurants slash. So that's almost like what you would type in your browser search bar to retrieve this particular piece of information. So I build this request and then I execute it. That means I'm actually making it. It's like you type in something into your browser search bar and hit enter. And now I'm making an HTTP request. So this is a get request to that particular uh, URL. Okay, and, and then what's supposed to, now this is actually what failed. This is line 106, you can see again, it's down here. Uh, this is the line where the failure happened. And what the test suite says is the request should have succeeded. And uh, actually, let's see if I can hover over this. Um, so, and this is explained a little bit in some of the lessons where we talk about the HTTP protocol. When an HTTP request succeeds, it returns information, but it also returns a status code. This is almost like a method that returns an int. And the status code that it's supposed to, let me see if I can get that to define this for me. Yeah, the status code it's supposed to return, when I did to see that, it's hit F1, uh, is 200. Um, that's the status code that indicates that the request succeeded. That's what I expect to see. But that's not what happened. So the, what the test reads do is they say, here's what's supposed to happen. The error message, however, gives me some important information about what actually did happen. So if you see this message, it says the value of code, which is this call right here, was expected to be 200 because this is a route that's supposed to work. When I make a request for this restaurant's route, I'm supposed to get back JSON with all the information about the restaurants in it. But instead what happened is I got the code 404 and if you review some of the lessons on this particular topic, what this code means is this route was not found. So let's try to put together some pieces of information here. So what, what did the code do? So that's actually a really good question to ask. What did the test suite do that caused the problem? In this case, what I did is I made a get request to the API server for the restaurant's route. That's exactly what's written right here in the test suite. And that's frequently what you're gonna find. Right? If you can figure out where the test feed failed, you kind of look up a little bit in for the next for the first place where it says like formulate or do this or whatever. And that's what was happening. Right. I made a request to the API server for this particular route. Uh, you know, the execute the request was just actually making it. I formulated it first and I execute it. And then it sort of succeeded, which means it should have returned this status code 200. So what did I do? I made a request a get request for the slash restaurants route from our backend API server. What did I expect to happen? I expected it to return a 200 status code, which indicates that the request succeeded. What actually happened? It returned a 404. Now, what is a 404? A 404 is a status code that indicates that this particular route was not found on the server. So the server didn't know. I asked it for this particular piece of information. And it's telling me, I don't know anything about that. I don't have that route. This is like if you go to a website and type in a page that doesn't exist, this is the status code that gets sent back to your browser as a 404. Many of you have seen this as you browse the internet. You've seen like a 404 error. This is where it comes from. It's the HTTP status code for this page is not found. So now I have a much more clear idea of what is going wrong. And, and I would probably, you know, like write this down somewhere, right? If I was actually debugging, I might have a little notebook where I wrote down, you know, what am I working on right now? I actually have a little uh, thing over here where I keep track of what I'm working on. I might write, you know, bug with slash restaurants route, you know, expects 200 returning 404, right? And what really what that means is that this route is not found. So there's something wrong with my server code because the server code, when asked for this route, should return information about restaurants and it shouldn't return a status code that indicates that the route doesn't exist. So now I have a good, I still don't know why this is happening. I don't know what's wrong with my code. That's our next step is to take some actions that will help move us in that direction towards understanding what the problem actually is. But I need to be able to formulate the problem. Now, honestly, sometimes I've worked with people and that's happened to me myself, where as soon as I understand what the problem is, it's obvious what 
the problem, like what's wrong, right? What's wrong with my code? You might've been working on something. You might've been, you know, hacking away. And a few minutes ago you were like, huh, I wonder if I should change this. And you changed it. And now something's failing. And as soon as you understand what the failure is, you're like, oh shoot, I must've broken that. You go back. And, and you revert that change or whatever. So sometimes even just understanding what's wrong is a huge you know, win in terms of the debugging process. Sometimes that's where it ends, right? And I've had this happen to me where you know, something is behaving strangely, but as you really narrow it down and understand what is going wrong, it's like, oh, you know, a, a lot of times when something is broken or failing, just diagnosing the problem is most of the battle. Right. Then you have a sense of exactly what the problem is. And at that point, like it's, it's smooth sailing from that point and you have a sense of how to fix it. Not always the case. Sometimes this is just the first step in a long process that can take a while. But this is a really, really important step because if you don't know what's wrong, there is absolutely no chance you're going to be able to fix it. So next we'll talk about what to do once I know what the problem is.